I'm very excited for this class because landscape painting is my absolute favorite. Uh, landscape painting has a long history. They found it in the walls in Pompeii. Um, all sorts of depictions of their world uh, somehow survived that. Um, and it was also a big part of not just Roman wall hanging paintings we found, um, but Greek wall paintings that depicted um, the world of Santorini as they saw it. Um, we also saw this landscape painting was huge in um, ja Chinese and Japanese early work. Um, but then for a long time, it became very uncool um, and it was considered inferior to landscape paint versus some other um, types of painting. And really, you're only acceptable to depict landscapes when showing a biblical scene. Like, so someone had to be, jo you know, Joseph had to be sitting in a beautiful landscape. There was no reason to paint just a landscape. But then in the 1500s, um, the Dutch started doing these amazing landscapes. Actually, the word landscape is a Dutch word that means landschap, that means region or tract of land. Uh, and they really turned it to something else entirely. And then Americans came along. And in the same way that, you know, we do Broadway is our f sort of theater we introduced to the world, landscape painting is really what we've offered um, to the painting world because probably because we have so many like majestic, unbelievable landscapes in one country. Um, it's really what we were known for and took to a new, le new level. And, you know, I'm sure you've heard of the Hudson River School, and there's just been endless um, American painters who've really changed it. In fact, um, the, a really famous art critic is named Robert Hughes, and he always said, landscape is to American painting what sex and psychoanalysis is to the American novel. It's just what we were known for. But that said, there's tricks to, just like everything else, there's tricks to landscape painting, and we're going to go through those. Um, the first one is to have the larger, more detailed objects in the front and smaller, simple objects in the back. It just... It's the way your eye actually sees, so it's just kind of depicting that, and it just it gives your painting a sense of depth that most landscape painters are trying. The next, the second trick is to put foreground focus. So put boulders in the front, or um, cows, or deer, um, you know, cliffs. Anything in the front will really create a sense of sense of depth and and kind of put the viewer in the picture a little bit, as if they're standing in those cliffs. Um, that's a very, as you can see by how many there are here, it's a very, very common landscape trick is to put something in the front. Logs or, you know, trees, tumbleweeds. Um, if you do that, it's a quick and easy way to create a sense of depth. Um, and it's been happening ever yeah. since people did landscape paintings, even, um, I can't say his name, Hok Hokusuka, the, who did the 36 um, views of Mount Fuji. He did that a lot. He put the mountain right in the front. Um, and then the third trick is lighter to darker or darker to lighter. This is like the ombre of painting. You just want to gradiate. So um, it just, again, is another way that creates a field of depth and differentiates the foreground from the background. Another simple trick. And actually, you'll notice a lot of these paintings do multiple of these tricks. Um, so they might have a large object in the front, and then they're also creating the gradient of color, I mean, of value. Um, you could inc you could insert an S curve or a path. That's a really easy, great way to give a sense because obviously the path will narrow and give a sense sense of depth and and that the viewer is traveling through your painting. Um, there's no shame in your game for using tricks in painting ever. So the more you know, the better. Um, overlapping and diagonals is very frequently used. You can, you know, when you're considering your own landscape you want to paint, you can really just add a diagonal where there isn't one, and that adds quite a bit um, of depth um, to this. These are Grant Wood, by the way. There's, there's going to be a big show at the Whitney. He painted American Gothic. Um, and so, yes. And then the final is just you can break all of those rules, which is, this is George Morrison, one of Rob's favorite painters, actually. He's a um, Native American painter, and he... Had none, he broke all the rules and did more of like these crazy flat paintings. Um, and again, you, there's all sorts of ways to do it. So you don't have to follow any of those rules. You just won't have the depth. But if you're not going for depth, then that's a really um, great way to do it. Now, landscape painting is not that popular anymore. I mean, you don't really see it that as much as you see other types. But again, I think the people doing it the best, um, most of these I'm going to show you are American painters. Um, Carrie James Marshall, who had the best show hands down last year at Met Brower, is amazing. And, and these are his, uh, including this epic San Francisco MoMA he did that's amazing. Um, Celeste Pre Spencer is 
does crazy, you know, scenes in the middle of her landscape. So the landscape might be secondary, but I don't think so. Jules de Baloncourt, these are epic size. They're large, and they're just filled with details, and he uses a lot of those tricks. Most of these people use those tricks, the four tricks. So um, our friend, this is our friend Brad Callhammer. He does these beautiful, beautiful feels. Um, Jamie and Gilano, she has a show up right now in Chinatown. She's bonkers, mm -hmm. but an amazing painter. Um, Anselm Kiefer does these very apocalyptic. Um, he's German, so that's how he rolls. Um, and then Raxaw Downs, who I learned about actually Marfa. He's from West Texas. So, so in the 17th century, they used a term, term called Arcadia, which was basically the term for your ideal an ideal landscape. So, I want you to think about what your Arcadia is, whether that is Maine or Norway or South Dakota or Fire Island or wherever it is. Bring in a picture tomorrow or get an image in your head, and we're going to use those painting tricks to paint our own Arcadia. Okay. I'll see you then. Bye.